Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, to discuss uh, further into parametric equations and now look at a uh, laboratory project, which is basically a project at the end of uh, some of my some of my calculus uh, book chapters. And in this particular one, it's called running circles around circles, and it is actually a very uh, fascinating uh, project. And we'll go over part one in this video, and uh, th there's six parts to this video series or this um, a pro applied project right here, or six questions. So initially I'll go over just question one instead. And, and basically question one is uh, over here, and let's just go over it. So a laboratory project running circles around circles. In this project we investigate families of curves called hypocycloids and epicycloids, or I think it's pronounced epicycloids, uh, instead of epic, that are generated by the motion of a point on a circle that rolls inside or outside another circle. And a, and a hypocycloid, and I'll show you an animation soon, is a curve traced, like that type of, traced out by a fixed point P on a circle C. So this point P on this circle, this pink one C, as C rolls, and it's rolling this way in this case, yeah, it's rotating like that. Uh, on the inside of a circle. So hypocycloids inside and then uh, epicycloids as I'll show in later parts is on the outside. So with uh, outside, I mean inside of a circle with center O, so there's a big blue circle is O, and a radius A. So small a is radius there, B radius over here, and that's just a small circle. And what we get is a point like this, and the shape actually looks something like that. And yeah, I'll just erase this, because this one is just a bad drawing, I'll, I'll get to it in a bit, but if we go to this uh, Wikipedia, it has a neat animation right here, so as you can see, the point traced is across it like that. So we'll, uh, we'll restart. So we have a shape like this, it looks pretty cool, it looks like kind of like an A-ish shape. And yeah, that's, uh, that's how the animation works, so the points on the small circle as it rolls around it. And now I just want to point out before I get to the further into this question, uh, this is just a bad drawing because remember my, on my, if you recall, definition of uh, radiance or arc length, this arc length is going to be uh, the radius, which is A, times by theta, or the angle across. But because this ball never leaves, or the circle, inner circle never leaves the outer circle, the, the distance that it rolls from the starting point must be well, the exactly the same as this inner circle from the point P. So that means this right here has to be a theta. But as you can see, it clearly doesn't look like it. So this is just a bad drawing from my calculus book. And I'll, so I'll just draw it by hand instead as we try to prove it. See, so yeah, I don't know why they just made it like that. Uh, where this should actually be is this point P should be, if you want to make it look like the same distance from this point to A, it should have rolled more so, I would say like somewhere here, P, like that. It should be something like that instead. Because then it will look a bit more realistic than that. But anyways, uh, moving forwards, yeah, uh, we could either do that or make the ball bigger, or the inner circle bigger. So let's move forward. So this part states, show that if the initial position of P is A0, so that's the starting point, and the parameter theta is chosen as in this figure, just an angle like that. Then parametric equations of the hypocycloid are shown here. X equals A minus B cosine theta, plus B cosine, and we have A minus B over B theta. And Y is equal to A minus B sine theta minus B times sine, and then A minus B theta. Uh, I mean A minus B over B times theta. So we got to prove that. So let's look at question one. So first thing we're going to do is, well, just let's just draw this on our own instead of using that drawing from my calculus book because it's just bad drawing. So x, y, like this. Let's draw a big circle across it like that. Okay, so just fix that up. So something like this where the radius is a from the center. So we have o like that. And now if we draw a line across here, and then we have a point there, this angle is theta. At this point right here is, we'll call this a zero. Of course, yeah, is just a radius, and then zero is the height, like that. 
So now the next step is to draw our inner circle, but again, we have to make it the same distance from here to here. So then that would look something like, uh, let's just say if we had a value here, something like this, and then draw it around. So this looks uh, kind of like that. So I'll draw this a bit closer here. So let's say we had a circle like that. So it's a bigger circle than the one in the drawing. And let's say it starts off there. So yes, assume it's a perfect circle uh, like that. And now this radius is B like that. And now what we'll do is uh, look at the center here. We'll call this center point Q. And now what we need to do is solve for, well, the distance uh, from here here or the coordinates of P. So this is the point P is right here. And, the, and then the shape is going to be curved. If it just looked like that, I was dashed line like that. So the curve kind of looks like. So yeah, just erase that again. Just, uh, just the, I just drew it for illustration initially. So let's look at this. We have to find out the coordinates x here, and then y is, well, all the way across here is y. So the first thing what we'll notice is, is uh, in this uh, derivation, it's basically going to be a bunch of trigonometry we're going to look at. First thing we, we should do is find the coordinates of this q so that if we draw this all the way here, so this distance we'll call this qx. And then, and then qy is going to be, well, the distance from the top to the bottom here. So this is qy like that. So we can determine this one, and that's basically going to be uh, by our uh, the yeah, by the trig ratios or cosines going to be adjacent over hypotenuse so adjacent which is qx over now we need to find out our hypotenuse but what we know is well this this is uh, radius b that's the same thing b right here from here to here and then the overall one is a so then that means that this distance uh, must be well this is just a minus b. So we just subtract outer radius with the inner. So that's the hypotenuse all the way up to here. See, so I just drew that a bit better. So that's the hypotenuse. So we could write a minus b like this. And then the next one is for the um, uh, for this one right here. This is the right angle. So for a qy, we could use the sine uh, angle like that. Sine theta is equal to qy over a minus b. So we can solve these by just rearranging uh, this equation. Let's write the Q a bit better. So yeah, just write, that, write it a bit better like that. So now we can solve for QX and QY. And then the next step is, well, we just for the QX, we just need to solve this distance across. And uh, what we'll call this, and then what we could do is draw a line directly across here. So then and then basically we can make it another another right angle triangle. So we so that's the basic idea of it. We just make another right angle triangle. We'll call this point S. So then then this distance is going to be well. I'll just write this Q S like that. I'll put these. Uh, I'll put uh, lines like that to indicate it's a distance. And then for uh, the Y, we're going to basically find the Q coordinate Q Y, and then we subtract. Um, yeah, subtracted by the distance right here, SP. So that's going to be across like that. This is going to be, yeah, I'll just draw that actually in blue. This is going to be SP like that. And that's this distance right there. And again, this is just our QS like that. And we just need to know now is this angle. So this angle, we'll call this alpha. But we, what we also know is that we draw this line, as this line is uh, parallel with this. So then if this is parallel with this, this means that this angle is the exact same. So this angle all the way across here is just our theta. So yeah, this is a bit messy, but if you follow along slowly, you'll, you'll get it. So that's theta like that. Yeah, so the next step would be trying to solve for uh, alpha in terms of theta. And we can actually do that because what we know is this distance right here is the arc length. That's just going to be... Uh, theta or a times theta and that's the exact same from distance from here to here so then that's the same thing like that this is also a theta so what that means is the combination of theta and alpha so thus 
theta plus alpha, or basically the arc length, I'll just write the uh, arc. So arc length, remember, is always equal to radius times it by, uh, times it by angle inside. So in this case, our arc length is going to be a theta. Well, instead of saying thus, I'll write recall by definition of an arc length. So what we have now is a theta is equal to, so this overall arc length is a theta times it by the inner radius, which is b. And then the angle now is the combination of theta and this alpha. So what we have is theta uh, plus alpha like that. So what we can do right here is basically what, yeah, what we have to do is just move this around and solve for alpha. So we can move this over to this side. What we get is a, a minus b theta and then equals to theta plus alpha. So we just subtract theta. This equals to alpha right here. And then we could uh, take out the uh, theta. So what we end up having is a theta a minus b minus 1. Now if we multiply this by b over b, so we have a common denominator, so then what we end up finally having is alpha is equal to, and I'll move this in front, this is going to be a minus b, so that's just a minus b there all over the common denominator of b. And then, well, this is just multiplied by theta, like that. So that is where that angle comes from in the, in the uh, parametric equation. So now that we have alpha, what we can write next, yeah, what we could write as well, set up these equations because we have the right angle there. So what we know is that, well, cosine of alpha is equal to, uh, this is adjacent over our hypotenuse, so b is a hypotenuse, so we have qs like that over b, and then sine theta is going to be opposite, which is sp like that over, and then we'll have this uh, it's, uh, as, I mean, uh, over here, this is hypotenuse b. So sp, like that. And uh, and now what we can do is, well, put these all together and solve for the parametric equations. Or in other words, just the x and y coordinates. So x is going to be equal to qx, which is this distance right here, from here to here. Uh, qx, all the way up to there, to here, and then added by qs. So plus absolute value qs like that. Now this just equals 2, let's write this a bit neater, qs. Yeah, and then this equals 2, well, well we can just uh, solve for qx, that's going to be cosine theta, and then there's a minus b, we move, move that over. So a minus b cosine theta, and now we add qx, I mean qs over here, we just move this b onto the other side. So what we have is b cosine alpha, where alpha is equal to this. a minus b over b and theta, like that. So that is, yeah, that's the answer for the first one. And basically we can uh, highlight this and even just double check first. If we scroll all the way up, we have, yeah, a minus b cosine theta plus b cosine a minus b over b theta. So just cosines and add it, and this is, yeah, that's correct. So now for the y, what we'll notice is y is going to be, well, qy. That's just the y coordinate of the center of the inner circle, q. So then we have this overall one, qy, which is from, yeah, from the top all the way to the bottom. Now we subtract it by sp to get our distance just from 0 to y, which is just y. So we subtract sp, where sp we can solve this distance right here, move the b over to the sine alpha. So that means we subtract distance sp. Now this equals 2, well, this is just a minus b, that's the qy. qy is over here, just move the a minus b yeah, for the sine. So now we have a sine theta minus a b sine alpha, where alpha is equal to this. And yeah, where basically alpha is equal to this, a minus b, uh, b theta, like that. And now if we circle this, and we could even check from above, it's going to be the exact same thing. So a minus b sine theta minus b sine, a minus b over, uh, and then times by theta. So 
Yeah, so basically the exact same that we just derived. So basically we've shown that uh, the parametric equations are, are, are uh, this right here. So x equals to this and y equals to this, like that. And it's, yeah, it's a bit messy here, but if you follow along, you'll uh, hopefully get it. And let me know if you have any questions. But anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from us. Very interesting, um, yeah, basically interesting yeah, derivation on parametric equations for this hypocycloid. And as I get further into this laboratory project, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to show you some absolutely amazing curves, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, it's all for today. If you learn, like always, get down all these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.